Welcome back to Cursed Mining and today we are modding the RTX 3080 with thermal pads. To be exact the Gigabyte Gaming OC model. You saw how I got it in my last video linked in the top right corner and we all know already that Gigabyte is probably the brand which cheaps out on pads the most. Let's fix that. Without any modding it was thermal throttling for me. GDDR6X generally does that at around 110 degrees Celsius which is already already a number that in the long term could damage the card. We definitely don't want that. It even happened with turning the power limit down so it only draws between 200 and 220 watts. First step let's add the missing thermal pads, the backplate. At first I did only that to see results but we will also do the front later to compare even more. So we open the card and the old rule always unscrew in a cross pattern. Then we can already see the gigabyte pads leaking oil which they are prone to do. We open it up further to remove the backplate on which you could basically fry eggs while it is running. For the backside you will need 3mm thick thermal pads. These are not as easy to find like other thicknesses. For these I took EC360 ones which I could find on Amazon. The bronze type and these can conduct heat of 6 watts per meter Kelvin. We'll talk about that stat a bit later. So you don't stick the backplate full but you check where the VRAM chips are located and then add the pads to the backside of it. This will allow it to transfer heat to the backplate instead of it being trapped in the little pocket of air between PCB and plate. I cleaned off the oil of the old thermal pads as good as I can and reapplied thermal paste. I used Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut as always. With GPUs I manually spread it as you really want that chip fully covered and thanks to Thermal Grizzly you can't really overdo it. Back together and let's test it. I now switch to Windows so that we can watch the temperatures of the memory with Hardware Info 64. That's free software linked below. Part 1 of this video was already a success. The card would not thermal throttle anymore. That means it would not overheat in a way that it actually starts to draw less power and that the hash rate drops. But still the memory is getting very hot. Around 106 degrees Celsius at max with a more aggressive overclock around 100 degrees celsius with a more relaxed oc of plus 1000 memory in windows that is still too hot for my taste before opening it holy smokes the card was just running for one week while i was waiting for new pads to arrive and you can see that it was leaking oil out of the fan holes already maybe some of you remember i even had a video on gpus leaking oil with their 10 series and already back then gigabyte was always the worst i'll link it above as well this oil does not come from the fans but from the leaky original gigabyte thermal pads so let's open it up again and for the front you will need two millimeter thermal pads for the vram chips themselves and for things like the caps and other small parts you will need one millimeter thermal pads. That is easy to distinguish but I still recommend getting a digital caliper for your thermal pad modding. By now I started to get a bit more precise by measuring more and cutting sizes more carefully. So I redid all pads now and of course cleaned the card with 99% alcohol in between. For the front I used thermal grizzly minus pads for both the 2mm and the 1mm pads. The process is always the same. Measure what you need, cut it, remove one side of the plastic and stick it onto the place you want it. Only when done with all of them did I remove the plastic. Also try to touch the exposed side as little as possible with your fingers. Even if you have clean hands, human skin always has some oil and sweat and you don't want that on the pad. I actually just use a pair of tweezers for that. After redoing the thermal paste again, just to be safe, it's now time to build the card back together, which is pretty straightforward. Back in the system and starting up, first with my conservative setting of a power limit of 61%, minus 200 core and a plus 1000 memory. And yes, the memory temperatures drop by more than 15 degrees. My average now is 83 degrees Celsius from previously 100. Even with a more aggressive overclock now, everything else the same but the memory pump to plus 1300, my max temperature and memory stayed the same. So again, a little bit above 83C average. 
I would say that's an absolute success without much effort. I finally felt comfortable enough to turn down the fan from its 100% and can now have it below 80% without the temps rising too much. So even with lowered fan speeds and more aggressive overclock, the temperatures never went above 88 degrees C again on the card's memory. Yes, thermal grizzly pads are a bit more expensive than others, but what we are also cooling very expensive tech here. Keep your tools clean and cool and you'll have them for a long time. I'm talking about the GPUs of course. I did a lot of my other cards recently as well, so you can expect to see more videos like this on the channel in the near future. Also I have different brands of pads coming in as well, so that with cards where I have two of the same model can do direct comparisons of different brands. Today we saw 6 watt per meter kelvin on the back and thermal grizzlies minus pads are 8 watts per mk. I want to see if claims of brands like Gelit or Gelit, I don't know, claiming they manage 12 watt per meter kelvin are true and if you can actually feel the difference. Please subscribe to see more modding and comparisons like that. That's already it. Thank you to everyone for tuning in again. I'm very very happy with the results. A little side note which I almost overlooked, the channel is turning 3 years old this week week. It's crazy how time flies. Thanks to every one of you for tuning in and for your constant support. Stay well and healthy. Happy mining and bye!